What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about income bubbles. My last video and a lot of comments where people were saying there's no way that people could be living on that little amount of money. And then someone says something that I'm going to prove to be fundamentally false. I don't know anyone that makes that little amount of money. All right. So shout out to the nerd tribe for leaving these well-constructed comments. Really appreciate you guys. All right. To the person who said, I don't know anyone who makes that little about amount of money. Is there a store that you go to and there's a cashier or there's a restaurant that you go to and there's a server that you've seen over and over again? You know someone who makes less than $35,000. See, the big problem here is what I like to call income bubbles. Typically, I'll tell you a story real quick to prove my point. Years and years ago, I bought these uh, bar stools from a girl named Darby on next door. And I go to Darby's house and I pick up the stools and I notice that Darby's driving a Porsche. I notice that Darby's boyfriend is driving a BMW and they live in a $750,000 house. I know because I checked all of this. I checked the property records. So I got real curious because Darby had that look, that fresh, middle class, yuppie look. So I go ahead and I find Darby's Facebook page and I begin to look at her friends list. All of her friends are similar to Darby. They all have that look. And I start seeing graduated from Penn State, graduated from Wharton, graduated from Harvard. This is her friend list. See, the income bubble that Darby's in, all of the people in her bubble are like her. Now, I'm really different because I know a chick that I used to fuck, for those folks who get disturbed and triggered, because I used the word fuck, like, you weren't here because your mom and dad were fucking. That's how you got here. You know, I found that a silly argument. I know someone who's homeless, and I know someone personally who's worth about $300 million. So I have a wide spectrum of people that I know. Now, I don't count the person who's worth 300 million. I count him as a friend. Uh, the person who's about to be homeless, I count her as an acquaintance. So there's a very wide spectrum because I'm a business person and I do a lot of analysis. So I know a bunch of people. So I know someone homeless and I know someone worth 300 million. Been to his house, had dinner, met the wife. So one of the things that you have to understand, and this is a big, big problem for you if you are in a certain income bubble. Just like Darby, all her friends had the same look, had the same pedigree, had the same lifestyle. And this is one of the reasons that people who are really rich don't mix with people who are not. I had a comment and he got checked by someone in the nerd tribe. So I appreciate you. Whenever I talk about how I live, there's a certain segment of people that construe that as bragging. So I went out, dropped $120,000 on Porsche and paid cash to a person who is less than to a person who is struggling to a person that's in a different social economic group, that could be considered bragging. But here's something that's funny. When I got to Porsche, I told all my friends and I sent them pictures. That's like, sweet car, nice ride. They did not consider that bragging. They considered that me sharing a moment of my life with them. See, if you consider the stuff that I put up here as bragging, that I started the business, I'm just stating how I live. I'm just stating how I live. And if you consider that bragging, you are less than. And when I'm going to go into what do I mean by less than? First of all, 
the human experience is ridden in mediocrity. Many people do not go as far as they can because they don't have the courage, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the drive, and they don't have the ability to deal with setbacks. This is the four key reasons that people aren't as successful as they could be. Because like, once again, in my life, I've dealt with more failure than the average person because I swing the bat more times. Let me say that again. I have dealt with more strikeouts because I swing the bat more times. I step up to the plate, I have the bat, and I swing. Sometimes I hit a home run, sometimes I strike out, and this is a process that I've gone through in my life where it doesn't even phase me to strike out. Like, once again, public, public record. I spent $400,000 to get in the car rental business and it didn't work out. That was a strikeout. That was a strikeout. What I'm doing today, I'm working on some new training that's going to start in March. And I'm going to, I'm going to step to the plate again, swing the bat again. And, and I'm going to hit a home run. I'm going to hit a base hit. or I'm going to strike out. See that right there. And a uh, shout out to Alan Roger Curry. We're about to make a little departure here. We're about to go a little left. Alan and I had this conversation. Why don't more men, and I'm about to tell you something. This is something for disruptive male, but I'm about to tell you something. If you, as a man, had the ability every time that you saw an attractive woman to do this, excuse me, how you doing? My name is Glendon Cameron and I find you absolutely beautiful. I want to get to know you. When can we go on a date? If you can do that and deal with the rejection that's going to come, the rejection, because when you see that woman, you find her attractive. She might be married, in a committed relationship, or simply not interested. But if you could do that, if you could get over your fear of rejection, your dating life will go into overdrive because I'll tell you a story because we're on this departure. I was on the airplane and next to me was this gorgeous woman who was sending me all types of leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Body language. She leaned away. She was saying, I am not interested in you. Leave me alone. What did I do? I kept messing with her. And over the course of the flight, her body language changed. We left the airplane holding hands and I fucked her. Yes. For those of you weak, moist men, every time he's like, oh God, he got some pussy. I ain't here for that. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck you with your little weak ass. Because that's how you got here. Your mama and daddy were fucking. That's how you got here. And if you can't deal with how you got here, more than likely you need to stop watching this channel because you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to cut it. You ain't going to cut it, bro, because you're too fucking weak. So once again, I say this. If you as a man can deal with rejection where it just rolls down your back like a drop of water. It's like, okay, your dating life will go in overdrive. You will start getting the type of women that you want because one day you will walk to an attractive woman and she won't have a boyfriend. She won't be married. She won't be in a relationship. And actually she may have not had a date in many months and you step to her and she's like, oh my God. He stepped to me. That took a lot of courage. I'm kind of turned on. My nipples are hard. It's happened to me several times because I am not phased by rejection. Rejection doesn't bother me. It's just a part of life. So now we're getting back to the video. Moist men, you can come back. Um, 
if you can learn how to deal with adversity, and th this is one of the things that happens for income bubbles. People who are in the certain income bubble cannot believe that certain people, uh, and like once again, and I'm gonna do a whole um, video teaching you guys how to do research because someone's like, I Googled it and the average house, average in income was 50. And I'm like, no, 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 that was an average single person income. That was average household income. And in the day of the hobo sexual, you have two, three, four, five people living in the household and all that contributes to average household income. Average household income is 56,000, which means that's the median. When we get down the median income, it actually drops lower. So you can have four people in a household to come up with that income of maybe 60,000, which means all four people make less than $20,000 a piece. Once again, there are towns where the people who work in restaurants, there's Crest Butte, I think Colorado, wherever Crest Butte is, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's up in the mountains. And since all of these New Yorkers and people from California are leaving New York and California because they can work remote, they're moving to these beautiful rural towns and they're dramatically exploding the rental prices and the prices of houses. And the people who live there who make $35,000 a year or less cannot afford to rent or have an apartment in this town because these people have moved to these locales and have pushed up the rental prices and property prices. They cannot afford to live there. And this is becoming a big problem. Once again, I'm going to do a show, probably do it live, talking about how I do research because there's a specific way that you have to do research. If you don't know, Google is programmed to give you the most popular answer, which may not be the answer that you are looking for. It may not be the analysis that you need. So I'm going to teach you how to do deep dive analysis because I know I've been doing income research for many years and it is staggering. It is staggering that so many people don't make money. Now, if you're living in an income bubble such as Darby and one of her friends was a guy named Far. And if you're in Atlanta, you know there's a road called Far Road. And I went ahead and I went to his Facebook page and I found his grandfather who the road, Far Road, is named after. See, there is a thing. There is people who have pedigrees. And these people with pedigrees hang around each other. Now, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound a little racist. White women typically hang out in their pedigree. If they step outside their pedigree, no one's going to know. Now, black women will step out their pedigree in a heartbeat. You'd be dating um, Ray Ray and Pookie in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, and don't care who know it. White women of pedigree, white women of breeding, they don't do that. If they do, you will never know. The dude will be told that you can only come over in the middle of the night, don't park your car in my driveway, park down the street and walk up to the house. That's, I mean, seriously, I'm serious. So once again, with these income bubbles, if you're of a certain income or a certain career field, and most of your friends are in that career field or of that income range, that's your tribe, so to speak. That's who you know. Like if I was just in my entrepreneur business owner tribe, I wouldn't know anyone who makes less than $300,000 a year. 
if that was only people that I associated with and that was only in my tribe. I would not know anyone that makes less than $300,000 a year just doing that with my entrepreneur business owner friends. But I know people who are waitresses. I know people who work. I have a wide spectrum of acquaintances. Let me go ahead and say this. And I have um, a wide spectrum of friends. I have friends that I went to high school with. I've known these people 30 some years. They're my friends, but they're not in my inner circle. There's only a handful of people in my inner circle. But if my income, I don't have an income bubble since, you know, I was in the car rental business. I was doing various dating activities. I know people across the spectrum on income because like I said, I step outside of my bubble. If I stayed in my bubble, I would think everyone was rich. If I just stayed in my bubble, I would think everyone is rich and they all their kids go to private school. But since I step out of my bubble, because to do this channel, I have to step out my bubble because, you know, if I was just in my bubble, this channel would be very boring because I would only, well, I would only be putting out information that would appeal to the top 10%. And once again, I said it the other day that I am talking to you where you are because I realize that a lot of people are in pain. A lot of people are struggling. A lot of people have issues. A lot of people have drama. And once again, the homelessness rate this year, we're only in February. The homelessness, the homelessness rate the jumped. We have more people and over half of the homeless people reside in the state of California. And they reside in the metropolitan states. And I have been watching the homelessness around here. And I am seeing more and more and more homeless people. These people have been globally reset. Some of these people, they, were, they used to be like you. Some of these people who are now homeless, they used to walk like you, they used to talk like you, they used to eat like you, they used to live like you. They were just like you. Now they're homeless. The ravaging of the global reset is merciless. It is ruthless. It doesn't care. And one of the things that, for, you, for those of you, because once again, I got the nerd tribe. So I got a lot of people with very high incomes who watch this channel. And I would say, take a moment and step outside your bubble. Because I've had it's all over. It's like, there's no way that people could be making that. There is, it's, it's more than a way. It's quite possible. It's quite possible. And I knew that a lot of people didn't make substantial money in my opinion, but I did not know it was that many until I dived into the numbers. 75% of the working population makes $35,000 or less. Now, what does that mean? What does that look like? You have people out there who are working 40 hours a week, 160 hours a month who make $22,000 a year. I want you to think about that. The average take home pay for these people is between $500 a week to $750 a week. $750 being the top end. $750 is $1,500 every two weeks. $3,000 a month. That's the top end of the $35,000 a year or less spectrum. That's the high end. The high end. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand, you know, cause you do the research and go to Google and put in single person income. Do not put in average income. Average income will get you 
household income. It will not get you single person income. And household income, once again, as, as said by the hobosexual revolution, we have more adult children living with their parents now than we've had since the turn of the century. And we have, you know, and that's just adult children living with their parents. And then there is not even an accounting for the number of hobosexuals living with somebody. The number of people living with someone because they don't have the income to live on their own. They don't have the money to live on their own is staggering. It is staggering. When I had my house, there were seven chicks that tried to move in with me. Seven. And this is how it started. First, they would start leaving stuff in the bathroom. That was the first thing. First, it would be a toothbrush. Then there would be hair, hair tires. Then there would be uh, commercial products like facial and shampoo. And it, one day I went in the bathroom and I was like, if I didn't know better, I would think a woman lived here because there was all types of stuff in the shower. There was Epsom salt for her baths. I mean, literally she had, if she had to move that stuff out and when she did, she would literally need two laundry baskets to carry all that stuff out. Two. Now I'm going to tell you one of the reasons women do that is to mark their territory because they know that if you're seeing another woman, guess what she's going to have to do? At some point, she's got to go in the bathroom and she's going to see all that. And she's going to be like, he, one of the things that you've got to look at with your income bubbles is that people are across a very wide spectrum of income. And one of the things that you have to understand is, let's say you're making $150,000 a year. Okay, you're making $150,000. Understand that 90% of the people that you drive by on the freeway are not making $150,000. Like, let's go ahead and say 95, 95% of the people you pass on the highway are not making 150. In most cases, 95% of the people, 90% of the people you drive on past on the highway aren't even making 75. They're not even making $75,000 a year. So one of the things that you have to understand, and as I said, once again, this is the Institute of economic thought. We have a lot of high income earners watching this channel, people who make money, people who understand money. Some of you understand that a lot of people don't make money, that a lot of people are poor. This is why crime is skyrocketing. This is why people are doing whatever they need to do to get by. This is one of the things that is happening. So once again, you need to, well, you don't have to. You could stay in your income bubble and that's perfectly fine because it's not going to impact your life. But I would offer, I would suggest, I would suggest that you come out your bubble because here's another reason. This is another reason I sold the house. The house from a tactical standpoint was indefensible. Because the way that it was set up, there was like a wall of glass and the door was glass. And I feel as the global reset goes on, that crime is going to escalate in that neighborhood. Why? Because that's where the money is. Literally, in my apartment here, I've got $50,000 between camera equipment, lights and computers and laptops and guns just here. And you go over there and this is stuff that someone could literally put in a duffel bag and roll out with. 
and those homes will be targeted. And that's one of the reasons because there was a front door, there was a side door in the basement. There was a door. I had one of those uh, prop up sticks where you put it under the doorknob. That way no one can just kick the door in because the house was so big. Someone could be in the basement. I wouldn't know. That's one of the reasons I got rid of that house. And if I get another house, um, it's going to be smaller or it's going to be better protected because, you know, I like modern architecture. But once again, come out your income bubble because your income bubble can lead you to be a sitting duck. This is one of the reasons that you see people of income doing dumb things like leaving their MacBook Pro on their car seat or leaving their iPhone. Like in Sandy Springs, I saw this all of the time. Women in the nice Benz, a nice BMW, a Range Rover, or Rolls would literally leave their car running, get out with the purse right there in plain sight and pump gas. All it would take is someone literally 15 seconds to slip in their car, hit the accelerator and be gone with their car in purse. I saw this all of the time. You want to know why? When you have resources, you're not as careful as you should be because it can be easily replaced. Like. I'll tell you something I did. And this is part like uh, I got something. I'm probably got a car that I'm going to give away just to get rid of it. Now, why would I give a car away? Hassle factor. Um, I've got some situations because I got a car that one of the things that I found out because of these renters is these cars have issues. And some of these issues I don't know until someone test drive it or has a pre and purchase inspection done. And I'm just sitting there like I got one car I'm just going to give away just to get rid of it, just to get rid of it, because giving that car away frees my time up because time is a hot commodity. Uh, I can get that car away and then I can take the time that I'm not using to deal with that issue any longer and make way more money than I can make selling that car. I know that's a very foreign concept to my people in the upper income ranges, you get it because you understand that time is extremely valuable. You get it for the folks who are just like, why would he give a car away? Hassle factor. This is one of the reasons that I hated the car rental business. Extreme hassle factor. I mean, every car at some point is going to need an oil change. It's going to need a tune up or something. And these people are not in a position to do that. And they're going to call me hassle factor, which I am not fond of. So once again, if you look at the collapse of Argentina and you look at the collapse of Bolivia, the wealthy people who were in an income bubble were the first ones to go. So if you're in the income bubble, make sure that you get some solidarity, make sure that you actually form a tribe, a network, and have a group of people that you're working with because this global reset has been going on for a few years, but this global reset is about to go up a few notches. When we get into the recessionary flight, because once again, it's just not me. We have a lot of people, you have billionaires who are saying a recession's coming, the recession's coming. You have billionaires who are saying the market is going to crash. It's not just me. It's not just me. You have a lot of people who are just like who've looked at the numbers. And once again, in the February, we will look at unemployment numbers and job creation numbers and see what they were. And I have a feeling they're going to be down. And then another thing is a lot of low wage businesses are having problem finding people to work. They're you want to know why? Hobo sexual revolution. These people are not living on their own. They can actually get away with not working. 
because their their income their their lifestyle is subsidized by a parent or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. There are people out there right now who are capable of working, but have opted out of working because they're living with someone who is working and paying all of the bills. Paying all of the bills. And some of these whole set homosexuals are putting in a lot of sex work. There's no direct transaction like you get X amount of dollars per sexual act. It's just understood that if you're living here and you're not working, you're fucking. <laughs> you're fucking. And you're doing whatever I want you to do. I have a friend. He has a homosexual living with him. She's hot. She's hot. And he tells me he gets a blowjob every morning. He's like, look, you can stay here as long as you're fucking. He told her, he was like, look, like, I don't care if you don't work. I don't care if you don't bring any money. I make plenty of money. I can pay all the bills. As long as you fuck me every day, you can stay here. And you know what? She fucks him every day. And, you know, whenever he wants a blowjob, she's there. He came home the other day and she was literally taking a nap. Taking a nap. She had went to the grocery store, got some groceries and stuff, and she took a nap. And he crawled in bed, took his clothes off, and they got busy. She is his sexual concubine because he provides her not just a place to stay. It's damn near a mansion. She's living in a she's living in a beautiful house. I haven't like extensively talked to her. I've met her a few times, but just based upon my read, she ain't leaving. <laughs> she ain't going nowhere. To get to live like that, rent free. And she has a credit card because he's like, I just got tired of giving her money. So I just like got her a credit card so she can go to the grocery store so she can buy personal items. You live rent free. You have access to a credit card. You can get cash if you need it. She ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. And this is the world that we live in. You will see the exchange for sexual favors at an all time high. All, I, you know, make a little departure here. When I was at Fort Mac, Fort MacPherson, and we used to go over to Spelman, we had a little running joke because they were poor college students. We say she give it up for a happy meal. You to go over there, pick up from the dorm, take her out to McDonald's. Get her a happy meal. She got happy because she had a full belly and she would lay back and take that dick. That was a running little joke we had. Because it was common because these girls were broke. That was 1989. 2022, we have more pressing issues that are happening. Sex work is going through the roof. Going through the roof. Formal sex work, only fans, prostitution, and informal sex work. Because that's the situation this chick has with my friend. That's their deal. Except um, they actually make a pretty cool couple, and I think that she's falling in love with him. Once again, departure. Moist men leave the room. When you are acting as a provider, a protector, it is very easy for a woman to fall in love with you because you're making her feel cared for and desired. It's very easy. All right, Moist Men, you can come back now. That message is over. So that's all I got. So I'm getting ready to start doing some training. And one of the things we're going to get into is home economics. And home economics is going to be the first phase of this training program because you've got to get your home situation straight before you build a business, before you start making money. Because one of the things I consistently see here on YouTube is entrepreneurs who are gotten into business and they're making money, but they, they, they've not managed the aspect of managing money. And it shows because they're doing stupid stuff. They're doing Mr. Organic stuff. 
like Mr. Organic and Tall Guy Reviews, like I don't really talk about them that much because they make no pretense to be, well, Mr. Organic was lying about that mansion. He didn't buy that mansion. He was renting that mansion. And one of the things that I consistently see is people look up to these guys because they want to get these cars, but they don't understand these guys have a network and they have a source of revenue. Big, big difference. But we're going to get into home economics, and I, I'm going to work on that today because there's going to be several phases. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to price out each phase, and I'm going to make a, a bundle that will encounter include all phases. So I'm going to work on that today, and I'm going to get ready to rock and roll starting in March. And this Sunday, I'm probably going to have a training probably going to have a training so i need to work on that so i will announce that be on the lookout for that and we're getting ready to rock and roll we're getting ready to start cooking with gas man we're getting ready to make it happen so that's all i got for you guys i will see you in the next one